So we're on to our next couple of colligative properties that we're going to describe here, and the two of them are actually closely related. We're going to take a look now at the ideas of boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Now, a couple of videos ago, I did a demonstration of boiling point elevation for you. You remember I had a beaker of uh, pure water, and then I had a beaker of water to which I added some sodium chloride. And then through the magic of video, some time lapse happened, and I showed you that the boiling point of the pure water was just about at 100 degrees Celsius, but the boiling point of the solution, the water that had the sodium chloride in it, was noticeably over 100 degrees Celsius. Was, as I recall, it was about 102 or a little bit more degrees Celsius. So the boiling point had gotten elevated. And that is true. Anytime you add some solute to a solvent to make a solution, to make a homogeneous solution, it turns out that you increase the boiling point. Okay, The temperature at which it which you're going to need to get to, to get those solvent liquid molecules to rise in pressure and uh, get to being equal with the atmospheric pressure, right? That's boiling point, when the vapor pressure of the liquid equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure. The temperature you need to get to do that is higher. It also turns out on the other end that when you add a solute to a solution, you lower or depress the freezing point. So you actually need to pull out more energy out of the liquid solvent molecules in order to slow them down enough to get them to freeze. Let's see if we can understand why the boiling point goes up and why the freezing point goes down. And in order to do that, we have to visit with an old friend. That is the phase diagram, okay, which I'm showing over here. Remember, phase diagrams are pressure versus temperature diagrams, and I've sketched out here in black the general contours of the phase diagram that hopefully you would be able to produce for water. And you know it's water because it's got this negatively sloped solid liquid equilibrium line. Ignore the blue lines that you see there for now. We're going to get to that in a second. So let's say that right around here on my phase diagram, right around here, let's say that that's 1 atm, okay, typical pressures that we live at. So then right about here would be the boiling point, the normal boiling point for water, okay? The, and we all know that that down here then would read 100 degrees, okay? So right there is the normal boiling point. Now, I'm going to take my pure water, and I'm going to dump some solute in it. I'm going to dump maybe some salt in it. Now, we learned from a previous video that when you go from solvent, pure solvent, to solution, what do you do to the vapor pressure? Remember, according to Raoult's law, the vapor pressure starts to drop. So the equilibrium point between the liquid and the gas, that point right there, right, that vapor pressure is going to get lowered. Thus, I'm beginning to draw my blue line here. So that data point, which would be the vapor pressure of pure water, now it drops down to there, let's say, depending upon how much solute I've added. So I lower the vapor pressure. And now that would have to be true for all the other temperatures, okay? The boiling point of water is right here at whatever pressure that corresponds to, but that vapor pressure too would get dropped as I add a solute. So the liquid gas curve gets shifted down with respect to pressure, okay? So for every temperature, the pressure has been lowered. The vapor pressure gets lowered. By lowering the vapor pressure across all these different temperatures, it turns out then what I do is for any given pressure, I have shifted over to the right the boiling point temperature. So the boiling point of my pure solvent is 100 degrees at 1 atm. But then when I add a solute at 1 atm, I now need to go to a higher temperature as measured by this delta T value here to get the solution to go back to boiling. So I have delta T of boiling. So you can see here that the boiling point gets shifted to the right for every single pressure. And I can quantify that. And that's what we see up here. The change in the boiling point, delta T sub B, change in the boiling point, turns out that it's going to be equal to the molality of the solution, little m. 
This is why we introduced molality uh, several videos ago at the beginning of this unit. That's a little m there. That's the molality of the solution. And the extent to which that boiling point is changed is also um, related to the boiling point constant. This is a property of the solvent. So this KB here, I know this is confusing, and unfortunately chemists haven't used enough letters for different things. This isn't an equilibrium constant. It has nothing to do with KB equilibrium constants you learned last year. This is the molal boiling point constant for a given solvent. Okay, this is a property of the solvent. So the extent to which the boiling point is elevated is equal to this molal boiling point constant multiplied by how concentrated the solution is. More solute in there, i.e. a greater value of molality, the larger the boiling point. It's also important to keep in mind that what we're calculating by doing this product here is only the change in the boiling point. So if you're asked for the new boiling point, don't forget to add the delta TB to the old pure solvent boiling point. And you want to add it, right, because the boiling point gets elevated. So for water, you start with 100, and whatever you calculate here for the delta TB, add that to 100 degrees. On the other end of the spectrum, freezing point depression. Now this one is a little trickier to try to rationalize. Um, and it's best described with a rigorous uh, analysis of thermodynamics, and we'll get into that later on. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a kind of a hand-wavy explanation. The freezing point always goes down when you add a solute. As I record this, it's kind of the middle of winter, and as you know, we've put a whole bunch of salt on the roads to make sure that ice doesn't form as easily. You need to go to a much lower temperature than, you know, zero degrees Celsius before the water that's on the road is going to freeze over. So we like to depress the freezing point of water in the winter by salting the roads. So why is it that the freezing point will go down? Okay. It turns out the freezing point goes down for some detailed thermodynamic reasons, but here's one way to think about it. In order for a liquid to freeze, the water molecules, let's use water, the water molecules in the liquid phase are moving around. For them to freeze, they need to start forming intramolecular bonds with one another, right? Hydrogen bonds, LDF interactions, those kinds of things. So they need to form intramolecular interactions with each other. If there are solute particles in the system, the solute particles essentially get in the way of the water molecules from finding each other in forming these intramolecular forces. So instead of slowing the molecules down to one temperature to get them to find each other, what you actually have to do is slow them down even more, thus lowering the temperature even more. So you have to lower the temperature to get the water molecules to freeze with one another in the presence of solute particles that are sort of getting in the way. So it turns out that for any given pressure along our y-axis here, what you have to do to the temperature is you have to lower it. So we have a delta Tf, okay, a change in the freezing point. And we can quantify this as well using a very similar equation. The change in the freezing point is equal to Kf little m, okay? I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but my kids are talking in the background. Um, so little m here is molality, and kf here is the molal freezing point constant. Again, I know it's capital K. You want to think equilibrium. It has nothing to do with equilibrium. This is the molal freezing point constant, and again, it's a property of the solvent. It's different than KB, right? Water has a KB value, and it has a different KF value. So the extent to which the freezing point goes down is equal to Kf little m. And again, don't forget that when you do this product, you're calculating delta Tf, to the change in the freezing point. So make sure you subtract the delta Tf, subtract that from the freezing point. So we know water has a freezing point of zero, so make sure you subtract the freezing point, the delta Tf change that you get from these colligative property equations of boiling point elevation, and in this case now freezing point depression. So add the delta Tb on the top end, subtract the delta Tf on the bottom end. Okay? We'll do plenty of practice problems with this. One of the neat things you can do with this colligative property is it turns out you can go ahead and get the molar masses 
of unknown compounds. So you have a known mass of some unknown compound that you dissolve in a solvent. And based upon how much the solvent's boiling point or freezing point changes, you can figure out how many moles of that unknown are there, and then you can go ahead and figure out the molar mass. So this is actually a pretty handy colligative property. It would allow us to do things like evaluate molar masses of unknown compounds. All right, so that's two more down. Next up, osmotic pressure.